power of God. And it is. We've been preaching that you have all of this inside of you. And it is. And we know that God wants to use you in different areas. All of he is involved. And he does. But without love, it's worthless. And now, this body needs Christ. I love me too. I love you. I love you so much. It breaks my heart. Because we're lacking right now. Pastor, what are you talking about? We all love everybody. Yes, we can tell. <laughs> yes, we can tell. <laughs> because attitudes have raised up and, and people are demanding, why, yes, that's the love of God. If it ever was, praise the name of Jesus. No, this is about, this is about us and our relationship with God. And if then we have to love one another. And if we love one another, will we not be aware when there are people in the body that are in need? And will we not do something about that if we know it? And if we can't do something, will we not carry it somewhere where it will be? Yes. Jesus, because this is, this is who we're supposed to be. Jesus is the epitome of love. He cares for you. Yes, he does. Turn to John chapter 13. He cares for you, and because of his love, most of you have a life now that, was, that is totally different than where you were raised or how you used to be. Uh, you know, whether you, were a, whether you were a drunk or an alcoholic or you were a, a drug addict or you were a prostitute or you were a gambler, whatever it is that you were has all been changed because the love of Christ came into the life and changed everything around. Praise God it has changed everything around. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, that's... What'd you put him over there for? <laughs> Yeah, I guess I did. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Well, yes, I can read this. <laughs> Verse 35. Well, let's read for because it is a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. By this will all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another, if you have love for one another. Father, I thank you right now for, the, for this day, for what you are doing, O oh God, for what you, are, what you have already started, Father. Lord, let every heart be yielded to you this morning. Lord, let our hearts be so open and so broken, Lord, that you will be able to speak directly into our heart what you have done. And Lord, we'll give you the praise and the glory for it in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. You may be seated if you're able. The love of God is the most important thing that you have. The most, important, the most important emotion, even, that you can carry is love. And I realize those are not necessarily the same. Love has to be able to flow through us. If it doesn't flow through us, then we're just like everyone else. Because we're supposed to be different than everyone else, right? And God has planted a spirit of excellence here. Is that correct? I have told you this from, from how long ago? Spirit of excellence is in the house. And it's supposed to be just trading every fiber of your being because God wants us to be excellent. I want you to be excellent. I want you to be everything that God can make you. 
Love is the first thing, but how about, how about this one, forgiveness? Are you forgiving quickly? Well, that depends on whether they just took my bread or if they did something worse. They did something worse, we may have to do something else besides be forgiving. No, that isn't what the Word says. Because, you see, if you don't forgive and if you don't let love flow, God can't forgive you. And I have a feeling the church forgets that every once in a while. We can, I mean, you see people and you just mention somebody's name and it's like... And they as I know who they are. I don't want anything to do with them. They did this and they did this and they did... I don't care what else they did. If you want to get to heaven... You're going to forgive that. You need to forgive that and let it go. I'll forgive it, but I ain't letting go of it. Then you're not forgiving it either. Right. Bless the Lord. You need to know that. Because if you're, if you're holding it, it affects, every, it affects every time someone mentions their name. It affects your attitude. It affects who you are. And it makes you hard. How many of you know you're hard? Don't raise, well, don't raise your hands. Probably in a good time. What do you know about stewardship? What do you know about stewardship? Well, I know we're supposed to pay our tithes. We got that part. Yes, you are. Yes, you're supposed to give offerings. Yes, you are. But stewardship is so much more than that. It is being, it is being a, a, a ruler over your house. Stewardship is taking care of everything God's given to you. How many of you realize that God has given you a family? Oh, in the household of faith, God's given you a family. If you didn't have a family outside this house, you've got one here. And you're supposed to be taking care of this family. Woo, hallelujah. And we have to teach family we have to we have to care for the family we have to make sure that the family is praying we have to make sure that the family is well we have to make sure that the family has, has provisions we have to we have to help the family if they fall behind we have to we have to not judge the family whoa wait a minute Let you without sin. <laughs> Get your little stone because mm -hmm, you you're, you're first. No, I don't think anybody in here has that, has that place that wrapped up so far. But stewardship is taking care of the household of faith. Do you agree or not? Yeah, yeah. Everybody in here agree or not? Yeah. If you don't agree, you need to say no real loud. And I'll let you pray up here real loud. Because... We have to take care of one another, and we have to care about one another. How many of you realize that there are people in the body who are in need, and don't raise your hands, and you have said, yes, and I'm for them. Is that going to get them to church? If they don't have a vehicle, is that going to get them to church? If they don't have any food, is that going to get them warm and fed? No, it isn't. Mm. But how many of us can go by that same person day, week after week, not realize there's a need there? Well, let me just let me just let you know the secret. It is. It's happening right here, right here in this house, in the faithful house of God. There are people that have needs and nobody pays any attention. Can you believe that? Well, did you, did you not look? Me either. I wasn't paying, I wasn't getting it. I didn't get it. Of course, I'm the last one out the door normally, so uh, part of it I've missed. But everyone else should have been able to see it at least once or twice or six times. So... What I'm saying to you is, are our hearts, have our hearts gotten calloused 
so that we don't pay attention. Because if it was our family, come on now, if it was our family and they were in need, we'd take care of them. In fact, if we had to, we'd pay for it. Say amen. If, if, they, had a, if they had a vehicle that, wouldn't, that, was, that was screwed up, didn't have any way to fix it, would we not go and do it? Or we would find somebody that would and we'd take care of it. Is that the right or not? Then, then what's wrong here? We've, we've missed something. That's why we're having this today, because, because that. And I want to ask you something else. Um, how many of you have noticed that there are people missing? You ought to stand up here times and, and look out here, because you'd, you see every empty place. Is that all my fault? I get blamed for it, right? You might as well know that. I get blamed for it. And if we don't do something about that, I'll stand before God with it. So we're going to do something about that. Anyways, you noticed that Joe and Vicki Hammond haven't been here. Have you asked where they are? Have you, have you called or whatever? Because right now they're in a really difficult place. And... That's not your fault. No, it is not. Their past is, no, it has nothing to do with that. This has to do with this body caring for faithful members. I want to ask you something. Do you, re, do you remember all, all the fellowship things that we have done, all the, all the work effort things that we have done? They are present. If they have, even if they have to ask Bob to come get them, when there's a work time to do whatever, they're there. Do, when we do the, the big thing at the, at, the, at the fall, close away and stuff, they were there. When we did one other thing, they were there. They would come and be, they are faithfully here when they are able to be here. And, and it's like, didn't even know they were gone. They're quiet. They're not rowdy like Ted. You would know, see if, you'd notice if he was gone. Yes, you'd probably be asking me, where is he? I thumped him, he's home. <laughs> oh, but because, because they're, they're quiet and because they're not in your clique or they're not in your favorite little group, we, we've kind of forgotten them. We want to we take care of that. They're in need right now, and I want us to take care of them. Well, I'll pray. Go ahead, and as soon as you're done, I'll wait while you pray. And when you're done, I want your wallet. You <laughs> what? <laughs> I want your wallet. It's not like I'm I'm it's not like we're money hungry and I'm not going to the Bahamas. Not today anyway. But I tell you, we are we need to take care of our own. We need to make sure that there do we have so many members that we can afford to lose any? I don't think so. So we need to take care of the ones that we have. Yes, but we take care of our... Yeah, I know, some of you have, have better circumstances with that than others. But you know, we need to help them. And we're going to, we're going to, we're going to do that. So, um, Ted, come and get this. You don't want to take this one. You take the one underneath it then. Yeah, you can take this one. I want you to take this. I want everybody to stop where you are right now. And I want you to... We're going to do an offering in the middle of the service. Yes, we are. It's called practical application. And you know what? It works because right now is when your heart is open and ready to do because they're in need. It has nothing to do with us. They're in need, and we need to do something about that. So I want you to, to stand to your feet, and I want us to pray together for them. And, you know, we're not going to not going to just give money so that they can go on vacation. We're going to we're going to either pay their lot rent or we're going to pay their 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 truck payment or their lot, whatever it is. We're going to pay something so that they can stay afloat till they can get on their feet, which is what we're supposed to do. We're not gonna we're, we're not gonna do everything for them, but we're gonna help where we can, and then we'll be able they'll be able to get back to God very quick. You know. We broke poverty off their lives. And the enemy has come to say, ha-ha.
I got you. No, they don't. He don't got you. No, they're coming out from under that because we're going to help them. So I'm asking you to pray this morning and not just decide what you're going to give, but pray right now. We're going to pray and, and let God direct you because you may have $50 you've got back and God may want you to give it. Oh, he wouldn't make me do that. That's for, that's for a day. He might want you to give it. Father, I just come to you right now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask you to speak to the hearts of your people even right now. God, I ask you to burden of prayer on each and every member of this body for Joe and Vicki. God, I ask you to just bring them to their remembrance every day that they begin to pray and strengthen them, send strength their way. But even right now, Lord, that you would, you would move on our hearts Lord, that we would, we would, you would tell us what you would have us to give so that we can help them. Lord, I thank you that this body will not let anyone just fall by the wayside and be gone. That we will pick them up and help them until they can be on their feet. Lord, I praise you thank you for giving us a love for your love for a love for you, O oh God, a love so strong. For you, Lord, that, that your love will just ooze forth from us in every area of our lives. We're giving you praise and glory for this in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I thank you that you're going to give us enough to help them, really help them this morning. We praise you for it. And I'm asking you to bless it back to your people. For those that are giving with a giving heart this morning, God, I'm asking you to bless them. Bless them abundantly and richly for the seed sown. In Jesus' name. Okay, everybody said amen? amen. Okay, Ted, go get them. Go get them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can sit. He'll be, he'll be over there to get you in a minute. Uh, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Thank you, oh God. Uh, let, me, let, me ask you, let me ask you a question. If it was me in need, how many of you would be, be right on top of that? Come on. You would. Praise God. You would. Every member of, every, <laughs> except for you, every member of this body would snap too if it was me. I know that, and I appreciate that. Well, you go over there and count that up for me, will you? Hallelujah. Every one of you would snap too if it was for me. But every member of this body is as important as I am. Every member of this body is as important as I am. Yeah, um, I'm supposed to be the leader. Yeah, I am, that's right. But it's just an office. I'm still a sheep. Jane's a sheep. She has an office too, but it's, it's not the same as mine. It's not as visible as mine. But does that make her less important than me? No, it does not. It makes her the same as me when it comes to needs and meeting those needs. So I want, I want us to become... He's right up here with it. He's right up here with it. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. I appreciate it. Every member of this body is important. And we have to, we have to shore up where we're missing it. How many of you believe you're gifted? You can, you can raise your hands now. I know I'm gifted. I'm gifted. I am gifted. There ain't a doubt about it. You get your hand up. Not you, him. Thank you. Don't you sit back there and say, not me, I ain't gifted. No. You are going to be responsible, I don't care. <laughs> if you are gifted... We're, going, we're back to stewardship. If you are gifted, do you realize that you are accountable to the rest of the body? What? If you are gifted, everyone in this room is gifted, correct? Everyone in this room is gifted and you are accountable to this body. What? Exactly. What? You should be accountable to this body. 
Some of us have lost our accountability and think we're only accountable to God. I can tell you that that's not how God sees it. Every man's giving an account of himself. God has given you gifts that you might use them for what? Well, when I put it on my resume, I have this gift and this gift in my life. Thank you very much. I'm good at what I do. When? When are you doing it? Well, when I come to church. When do you come to church? Well, thank you, Ted. I'm so, yes, you said that out loud. Behave yourself. <laughs> Well, you have, to, you have to remember that when we have service, people will come in here. Do you, know, do you ever come in here in need? Evelyn, have you ever come in this church in need? Oh, okay. At least. Me too. But, but if so, listen to me. If, if Evelyn comes in in need and you have the gift and you're not here, what's supposed to happen to her? Oh, come on, you can do it. I can do it. No. You're responsible to do it. Because that's gifted. You were gifted to do that. This is where you need to be. Oh, what are you talking about, lady? Listen, you need to think about this. Because you think, see, and, and the enemy does this to everyone, in case you don't know it. In fact, I've thought about staying home myself. I think about staying home. and You know what? Then people don't want to hear this anyway. I'll just stay home, lay on the couch. Let them go there and praise a while. No, you know, they, won't, they don't need me there. They can do that on their own. Now, come on, Marlene. You know that. <laughs> She's over there laughing like I was kidding. But, but I feel like staying home. Bob feels like staying home. So I'm tired of going over there and trying to lead worship. I don't, I'm tired. I just want to lay down. I'm going to lay on the couch tonight. Well, and you're, you're sitting in your pew saying, yes, but you guys have to be here. No, we don't. That's where you're wrong. We have to make a choice every day. We have to make a choice whether we're going to work or not, whether we're going to do the word or not, whether we're going to pray or not, whether we're going to come to church or not. And I'll tell you what, you think you can come up with excuses for not coming to church? I can write you a book of excuses. I've had a long time to think about this. <laughs> I've had a long time I've got a lot of excuses I can give you. hey I'm an expert in my field trust me but instead we're here but stewardship is about taking care of what God has given you and this is what God has given you God has given you gifts God has given you a family God has given you a place to worship Hallelujah. And we don't even want to clean it. Amen. We don't want to mess with that. Somebody else, somebody's doing it. Are they? Well, somebody's sick. So they're not doing it. Has anyone said, hey, let me come and do this? What? I'll get to that in a minute. So we'll just leave it, we'll just leave it dirty then, right? Till the people get up. Tell you what, we're praying for the ones that are sick. That's it. We're praying for them to get well so they can get in here and get this job taken care of. See, that's what I'm talking about. Where we've gotten hard nosed about things where we ought to be very soft hearted broken some degree because we weren't hard like that before were you were you always hard did you always think you it church wasn't necessary did you always make excuses for not going did you all did you always say well look, somebody will do it <laughs> it's like they don't need my ministry there tonight somebody else somebody will do it but then you yell because God does used you I'm not being used I'm not getting to do I'm not but you don't come to church to quit what what 
Excuse me, can, can somebody explain that one to me? Right. So we're supposed to be here to do that. There are those who are called to... Bob, we didn't set a date for this either. There are those who are on this platform to lead, help lead worship. Do you think that that is just a you get to get up and sing thing? Worship is a ministry. Therefore, if you are privileged to be a part of the worship team, and it is a privilege, if you are privileged to be a part of the worship team, then you, need, you should take that very seriously. Right? Which I would say then also would mean that you, you would not just be prayerful, but you would be here. We're going to, we're going to be having a, a worship team session. I won't call it a practice, but I will call it a session because we, have, we want to fix microphones and things where they, because I places and set microphones for certain people so that we're not ruining worship by fixing microphones and having to turn one up or down or whatever in the middle of service because I take it serious and I want us to be able to come in here and go straight into the throne of grace. I want the worship team to be able to follow Bob right into the throne and I want them to follow him so much by their heart that they are causing everyone in, in the audience to go there as well. That's what it's supposed to do. That's what it's, Jesus, that is what it's supposed to do. And if you're not serious about this, then you need to pray because maybe this isn't the place for you then. I, I'm, I'm serious. People, this is, this is, some of the most important time during the service is worship. I, if anything else gets done, we have to be able to worship. Do you understand that? Do you all get it? So worship team, I'm asking you to be accountable. If you are working... If you have a job that you are working and cannot, absolutely cannot make it, then I will understand that, but I better know it. Was anybody, you know, when, when people are missing, unless I know they're, they're really working, working, working. Get upset. Why? I'm, they're just one person. Let me just tell you something. One person makes all the difference sometimes. Do you realize that God has the audacity to come on the scene and actually change my message that I prepared, worked for, brought it to the church, started for the platform, and the minute my feet hit this platform, he says, we're not doing that today. We're going to have to do something else because, because so-and-so is here. What? And I'm so thrilled. <laughs> part of the time. <laughs> part of the time. I said, okay, but you have to give me a scripture now. I can, you know, I can do pretty good, but give me something here. But you see, this is, this is who God is. He's a personal God. So each one of you is so important. You come in here in need God will change everything around for you. So you see, everybody's that important. So worship team, you're that important. Set. Thank you, Jesus. 267, after we already took up an offering. Thank you, Lord. Glory. 
You know that'll pay their water bill and their, their light bill probably. And they'll be able to breathe for a month. I mean, seriously, think of, if you think about that, that's, it's going to take the pressure off and they will remember, they will remember that God yes. is on the throne because they didn't ask us to do a thing. And see, this is when, it's, when God is doing something so amazing. And do you realize how blessed you're going to get over this? You have just planted seed that God said to plant. And that means coming up, it's going to be a harvest. Things are going to open up for you. Things, things God has had in store already. And now the seed's been planted. He can bring you the harvest you, you need. Amen. Hallelujah. Give yourselves a hand. My word. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in case you think that I'm just, I'm just railing on you people this morning, I'm not. I am not. I am just making you aware that, there's, that there are some, and I'm sure it's none of you, some that are, that are missing it here, that we really need to, we need to get, get this caught up. Listen, I'm going to tell you a secret. Do you, do you know that the church is falling by the wayside? Why? Well, I was going to say, <laughs> because, because we, have, we, we have a lack of zeal for the house of God. Yeah, but pastor, I'm just tired. I don't want to. Well, join my club. I'll make you a charter member. I don't feel like it. I'm tired. Let's just go fishing. No, 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 no. You see, how many of you think, how many of you think I feel like it all the time? I just feel like coming to church. I just feel like ministering. I just feel like taking care of your needs. I just feel like praying my brains out for you. Absolutely. So glad you think that way. <laughs> now the truth is, <laughs> I get up some days and I think, I don't want you. And then the voice of God comes on the scene and he says, yeah, <laughs> do it anyway. <laughs> you don't feel like it? No, I don't. He says, that's all right. I don't mind if you don't feel like it. I'm just telling you, you need to do it anyway. Would you like me to send him to your place? Okay, I can do that. Because I, I think sometimes he needs to come to our place. How many of you are being lied to every day? The church doesn't need me anyways. Church does. Church does. Absolutely does need you, you know. Church does need you. I'm in 1 Peter. Let's, uh, let's go over there for a minute. Let's do, uh, well, we can do four. We can do anything we want to, I guess. I, how many of you are concerned with the with the school in India? About that either? <laughs> Jamie they frost. You know we're we're so thrilled that God is using. Do you know normally it's big churches, big big names that have have churches and and schools and things going on overseas, and we are fortunate enough to be blessed already. We have all that going on already, and it's so awesome. It's, it's so amazing. But that's not all there is. That's not all there is to be done. Well, we got that taken care of. Now we can cross that off our list. No, that's an ongoing. It's on. It has to grow. There's an ongoing thing here, and it has to grow. You can't just sit back and not do anything, or it will die. It's like having a baby and not feeding it. If you have a baby and don't feed it, it will die. We have, a, we have established some ministry there, and we don't want to see that die. So um, I want to ask you a question, and you're, you're allowed to answer it any way you like. If you don't want to, you don't have to. If, if you want to, that, that's cool. 
but we've we've already we've already established the school for the ministers but but there is there is a need for a building for the school to teach the kids there is i mean this is a real need there they are outside in the heat no roof over their head and they want to be there they want to be taught and there is a teacher teaching them in the heat how would you like to sit out in 106 degrees and have have water running down your neck all the time and know that there are people coming for miles around and they don't care that it's hot they don't care that they have to sit on the ground they don't care that the bugs are there they don't care that people are doing stuff all around them they just want to learn something and I think we ought to help them do that so I want to know we're still going to do the first of the month missions everybody understand we're going to do this but this is a new thing we're going to do as well so I'm asking you if you will if you will start saving saving some of your change or lay aside a couple of bucks a week whatever just whatever you want to do and we're going to put a basket or a jar or something back there on the table and I want us to give we, we need about twenty thousand dollars and you're asking us for it yes I am because you've got it you just don't know it yet uh, it's coming to you you just don't know it yet you haven't seen it yet but it's coming to you hold your hands out I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to give because God's gonna give unto me God's gonna make a way he's gonna give me seed God's gonna give me seed and I'm gonna plant seed and seeds gonna come up there's gonna be a harvest and it's coming back to me and I'm gonna be blessed hallelujah Lord I thank you for it in Jesus name hallelujah everybody said amen Amen. You know, sometimes you have to decide that you're going to help, you're going to do, even when you don't have any way. My, my, my dear friend, Hildy Voorhees, there was a, a man came and she wanted to give $100 so bad, and she didn't have $100. She never did have $100 at a time. I mean, never. She had eight kids. Come on. <laughs> got eight kids do you think you'd have a hundred dollars in your pocket nope <laughs> and yeah and so she wanted to do that she it was in her heart to do it so she said well I just really want to give that well God I'll take one of those envelopes if you'll fill it and so she took the envelope by faith and took it home and she and she prayed over that thing each day she prayed over it God made a way for her and she had that envelope filled just in no time she had the hundred dollars God made a way for her to to do some sewing and to do some crochet and do a little and she had the money so if you really desire to do God will make a way for you to do that you do you know he will so I'm hoping that you will ask God what he'd like for you to give and I'm not saying we have to come up with twenty thousand dollars in a week this isn't we've got it we've got a year to build it or they're close to it right somewhere close to a year we've got a year at least so we just want to we just want to make a start here because I don't know about you but I can always use more blessing get you blessed you know that it's going to get you blessed so we need to we need to do that now okay we did that part all right is this a strange service yes it is but sometimes we need to just come down to it is there maybe you need to think about this why are you here why are you here why are you not just today but why are you here why are you in this body why do you believe that you are here? What is it that you, you're expecting to get from here? Or to give to here, however, you, however it is. Because you see, one thing, one thing that keeps going is that I know that, that man didn't send me. Yeah. Man sends you, you can get out from under it. <laughs> if God sends you, you can't. I mean, I told you, I would have quit. Man put you, uh, no. Well, if man didn't put you here, what makes you think they can, they can take you out? Well, 
They just get so ugly about things, you know. But no, if God sent you, you need to know that God sent you. Sent you, why are you here? Hmm. Some of you didn't want to be here in the first place. It really wasn't it really wasn't what you wanted to do. Was it, Teresa? You didn't really want to be here. And I'm not saying she doesn't want to now. I'm telling you, but at the first, Bill was the one that really wanted to come here. Because of, because of the mission that we had done with, with um, the feeding, the, feeding people and stuff. And he, he loved that, and that's cool. Right? Okay. But Teresa came, and the first time Teresa came here, God spoke to her. <laughs> and she was so thrilled. <laughs> uh, and spoken several times since then. But you need to you need to know. You need to know. John didn't want to be here. He sat like this for how many years? Years at least. Sat here on the sat on the pew. Never moved a muscle, never said a word. And now you can't shut him up. <laughs> However, he got, God got a hold of him while he was sitting looking like that. And pretty soon he was standing up. <gasps> and pretty soon he was waving a hand up. I mean, he raised a hand. It was weird. <sighs> we couldn't believe it. And then before we knew it, he was, he was part of the worship team. Lord Jesus, God's done some things, you know. Evelyn's been here since the ark, almost. She came over on the ark with me. She, there was a lot of times she didn't want to be here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and in fact, she didn't want me around her part of the time. She was going to throw me off her porch. Yep, she was. She didn't want to hear what I was going to say. I tell you. You ever been mad? <laughs> oh, get a grip. You've all been mad before. That's why, we can, that's why we can laugh and talk about it now, because we've all been mad before. These people don't want to learn. I'm out of here. Bye-bye. That's how I got so short. <laughs> Trying to leave. <laughs> he kept cutting my legs off. <laughs> so I couldn't go anywhere. <laughs> no, most of the time it was because I got so frustrated because people didn't want what God was doing. And I can't stand it if you don't want what God's doing. Because I believe that God wants to raise this place up and be what it's supposed to be. What he's always desired to do was to make this place a place of safety, a place of supply. And it didn't matter how many people were going to be in this house, but it was about the people who were going to come through this house because the need was being met here. That was what the vision has always been. People lined up clear to the street trying to get in here to have their needs met. We can't meet their needs if we love them. If we have discord and we're biting each other, we cannot meet anyone else's need. We can't do anything constructive and good for the kingdom of God if we can't keep our hearts where they belong. If you can't love each other, how are you going to love a lost, dying world that's supposed to come through the door? How are you going to meet their need if you hate their guts before they ever get here? You don't want anything to do with people that aren't like you. We don't want to have anything to do with the people who don't believe the same thing that we do. Listen, his name's Jesus. And we all have things that we would prefer to do. But there is a mission for this house. And that is to meet the needs of the people who come through the doors. And I want us to be able to do that. But see, you were talking about your mother. Thirty years ago, however many years ago it was, that poor lady had a set of twins. <laughs> And she would come to the house of God and she would get angry because she was so protective of them. And she had reason to be because she was on her own, but she was so protective of them and people would say things to her. 
and she would leave and we would follow her and talk <laughs> she would come back the next service and try again I don't want any of us to be to be letting anyone loop here leave here and not find out what is wrong and if it can be fixed it needs to get fixed people we cannot afford to lose anyone there are people who have left this place and it's like no one even asked where they are nobody asked where they are nobody asked why they're gone because it's all about me it's not about us if we're not going to minister to anyone this is nothing more than a bless me club and you know what I have too much invested to leave this be just a blessing club I've been here 30 some years and I can't stand it that people don't care our hearts should be broken because people are missing our hearts should be broken because we may have been a part of the reason why they're gone either by ignoring by snapping or by saying something out of the way not thinking before you said it I mean we've done that and then people say well I can't stand them people they're they're hateful there what I would hope we're not well I talked to some of them people while we're out and boy if that's the way them people believe I don't want any part of that well hear it hear it because it's true people we had people say, come here because of what they saw on Facebook out of some of that came here if that's what you you will condone that we don't want any part of that it's not godly and you wondered why I threw a fit about you need to remember that that's public it's public so keep your dirty laundry in the basket keep your filth in the waste can where it belongs instead of putting it out there for everyone to to see and comment about okay chapter 4 8 it says and above all things have fervent charity among yourselves for charity shall cover the multitude of sins everybody's saying that's right and you don't don't like the person sitting across the other side of the pew out for sure that's exactly my point um, no we're everybody's everybody's sitting saying but does it occur to you that we hear <laughs> we hear what you say about each other does it occur to you that, that we hear it and so that we we do know that it that it is so even if you don't have ought you know what ought is? It ought not to be. <laughs> yeah, you have a ought against somebody, and you don't even know why. You're just mean about it. <laughs> you don't have a reason. You just don't like them, or you just don't care about them. They're, they're just not my kind of people. I'm sorry, they're just not. Well, it says to have fervent. Did you see that word fervent? Do you know what that is? It means get down to it you need to love them I mean not just love them love them I mean you need to get to it and if you don't like 
in this body, they're the very person that you need to sit with. You need to go sit with them and you need to pray with them and you need to take them on as a prayer burden until God gives you a love for them. Oh. Did you feel that drop to the ground? Instead of being, you need to catch this because this is truth. It is? I'm reading it to you. Does your Bible not say it? Well, it is pretty plain, I thought. Mm -hmm. For charity shall cover the multitude of so even if you think they did something to you. And even if it was intentional or not intentional, makes no difference. You're supposed to let it go. Oh, this one you'll love. Use hospitality one to another without grudging. You know what? I want to, I'm going to bring this up now. When you, when you, it says to use hospitality one to another. You can, you invite people to your house. Hospitality stuff. You invite people to your house, but you only invite one, 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 one couple. And it's always the same one. There are, and there are singles people, single people in the church who would love to be asked to fellowship. There are people who see, well, we have a little difficulty with that. Well, there are people in this body who don't see any other members of this body except for church time. Yeah, it, you get it? So it would, it would be nice if they see somebody some other time. Think about it. Use hospitality. It says one to another without grudging. Don't just invite Bob because he can come and bring his guitar and make, make nice with you. He will. But how come you can only invite him? Well, we're not asking you, that's for sure. That's right. Thou knowest. We've already seen that. Thank you. I get asked to Bob's house. What? You want me to lie to you? Oh, yes, we're out fellowshipping with the body all the time. I repent of that. No. Really? Well, we had, we had Doug over to the house. He's, he's been in fellowship with Michael's not about now back because he ate all the pork chops. And you know what? That was all my fault. <laughs> That's what I do. Do you know? Do you know something? I lived in a, I lived in a home that didn't have they didn't have leftovers. We, no, we didn't eat leftovers. We didn't eat leftovers my, at my home when I was a kid. We didn't have leftovers. There was enough for the dinner, and that was it. There wasn't anything left over normally, so we never ate leftovers. An adult, I don't, I've never eaten leftovers. And when I was, when I was married with, to Tony, he didn't do leftovers hardly. So I gave them away. Bob would get them. Bob's dad would get them. Sheena would get them. Michael gets them. Everybody gets leftovers. Doesn't matter. But since I've been married to Ted, he eats everything but the sink. <laughs> and... I forget that sometimes and give the leftovers away. And he said, where'd those pork chops go? And I said, I gave them to Michael. And he said, why? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm all for preferring the brethren, but let's, let's get real, sister. We need, to, we need to keep this at home. <laughs> See, I don't mind telling you. I did it. He ate it. And he, he ate them so fast that he said, I'll tell you one thing. Your wife can make pork chops. <laughs> He didn't know how mad Ted was that, that I gave him away. <laughs> so, anyways, hospitality. Uh, he said, uh, uh, Yeah, he said, Go out there and get those pork chops out of the refrigerator. And they were gone. Hello. <laughs> okay. Uh, where'd they go? Like I'd given away his firstborn or something. Oh, Jesus. Use hospitality. You know something? You don't have to invite people over to dinner. 
you could buy about a box of cookies and invite people just to have iced tea and a, and a cookie. You could ask, well, they won't come if you ask them for prayer. You ought to know that. You could ask them for and then make them pray. <laughs> you could trick them into that if you need to. No, you should be able to ask people to come for prayer. Would you like to come over and have a prayer meeting? Let's do that. Let's have union and prayer meeting. How many are going to show up? You live there. You don't have a choice. Teresa's coming. That's okay. We'll have three of us. Glory. We're having communion and prayer. Communion and prayer, I said. Not strawberry. No. It's, it still needs to be. And y'all are laughing. But we're lacking. Yeah, we did prayer meetings a lot. Yes, we did. I was telling that the other day because my... My, they would have prayer meetings without me sometimes and my dad would call me on the phone. I'm serious about this. When that round table that sits out there was still at my daddy's house, they would have prayer meetings. Anybody that came through the door was going to get caught praying because dad was a prayer warrior without a doubt. They were going to get, they were going to, get to pray. And, and at any given moment, you never knew when it was coming, my dad would call me on the phone and he'd say, Jude! i said, say, yep, you got your ear on. Because we need an interpreter over here. And they'd been praying. And God had, had wanted him to give a message. And there was no interpreter in the room. So he would call me and then he would give the message again so that I could interpret it for him. Because God wanted to move. God will move anywhere, anytime if you give him, if you give him access. He will. Anywhere, anytime. We need to do this, people. If you want to have a body that is going to reproduce... There has to be some love. Did you ever see people reproducing when there, when there wasn't any love? And sheep beget sheep. Pastors don't beget sheep. You would not like it if someone was coming in and taking that liberty. It has to be, it has to be with the, with the way it's set up. So think about this. Need to, need to do this. Fin let me finish this. I'll try. I'll try. As every man, woman, child, hath received the gift, and all you gifted people read this, even so minister the same one to another, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If any speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth. Oh, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Uh, okay, how we like that part so far? Are you loving this? Oh, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Why do you think it's, it's weird that you have, you have situations and circumstances and stuff? Why are you upset about that? Why do you act like you shouldn't have it? Why not you? I certainly have more than my share. Why can't you carry some? <laughs> if you have some of God in you, if you have all of God in you, if you have God's manifold grace in you, why would the enemy not want to tear you apart? You profess him, why would he not be on you? He's coming. Let me make this perfectly clear. No new text. He's coming. Snake on the way. Watch your feet. He's coming. Everywhere you go, when you are at home, when you are in the couch, when you're in the bed, when you're doing the dishes, he's coming. Well, I don't know why he'd bother me. I don't have any. Because you carry around the spirit of the Most High God. And because he's lied to you and told you that you aren't special anymore, you think he shouldn't be bothering you. Be thankful he's bothering you.
If he ain't bothering you, you ain't got anything he wants. This is not a good thing, is it? So rejoice in as much as you are partakers of sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with joy. He has given you everything you need to overcome him anyway. You understand? You have been given everything you need. It's in there. And if you feel you don't have it, is there any person in this room that doesn't have my phone number? Ted, do you have, do you have my phone number? Thank you. Yeah, Blair's used to have one style. I said, all right, I just punched 1-800-CALL-JUDE. If you don't have my number, you can have it. I'll get it for you as soon as service is over. Because I want you to know that you have access to help. If you, if you, if you call me, I, if I don't answer you, I will call you back as soon as I see that you called me. Because once in a while, like yesterday, my phone got locked in the car. So I didn't have it with me every minute. But when I, when I see that people have called, I call them right back. Listen, there is no way that I would let you go through stuff by yourself. If you can handle it, we'll get help. But you need to be help. You need to be help. Help in the house for everybody that needs it. You need to start giving your phone number, and you need to answer your phone. Let me catch you. I told you this before. I meant it then, and now I got backup. I'll send the Pentecostal hit team after you. If I find out, if I find out that I called you for prayer, and you just were screening your calls and didn't answer, I'm sending them. They're coming to beat you. And then we're sending you to the to mission field. To learn. To learn. No. <laughs> they can't go by themselves. They need they need a they need a, they need a keeper. <laughs> Lord God, we can't be doing that. Okay. I want to do Galatians 6 real quick and then I'll, I'll stop for, for right now. But in Galatians chapter 6, how many of you know that people make mistakes? And usually it's not on purpose. <laughs> Once in a while I think it is. Once in a while it is on purpose but mostly people make mistakes they open their mouths and don't think before they engage speaking which they should do for real should do but mostly they they just get in they just get you know they just get in trouble the word says in Galatians 6 brethren sister if a man be overtaken in a fault oh kick them to the curb with the quickness throw them out of the church don't let them sit in the pew with you it says you which are spiritual restore such an one in the spirit of meekness oh w what you mean you're not allowed to run around with your nose so far in the air it gets caught on phone wires? No, you're not. You're not, you're not allowed to hold the grudge and, and just snub them every time you see them? I mean, listen, people. I don't know how, how you think you're hiding anything when you come in the church and you're looking like this. And if anyone tries to speak to you, you do this. Are you telling me that you don't get it? Everybody gets it. Everyone knows you've been offended. You're mad. You're not talking to anyone. Go stand in the corner till you get over it. The corner is right here at the altar where you pray through and get a hold of God because you've got to... You can't, we can't... See, I'm, I'm reminding you how important you are. If you hold that... You hold back the Spirit of God from moving in the, war, in the service here. Oh, 
I did not. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah, you did. When you come in angry, you have to get over it. Do you know how, ma how many days I come in here angry? Oh, you wish. Usually by the time I get to church, I'm mad about something. What, you're the only, I'm the only one? Thank God, I'm greyhound. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost always angry over something. I mean, the enemy comes with something, no matter what it is. It might be that Doug's got on orange shirt. I saw it, well, I saw it before I got here. I know he's going to wear that orange shirt and I'm going to hate it. So I'm mad before I get here. But see, the Spirit of God already knows no matter what the enemy does, I have to get past it because I can't minister to you if I don't straighten up. So I don't get the privilege of coming in here like a bulldog after a bone. I don't get the privilege of standing up here and going... Oh, you think you don't look like Yes, you do. <laughs> or standing and standing in the pew with somebody, you're standing side by side and you're doing... Oh, she's not mad at him today. <laughs> they are in love. Come on, it, it's very evident. And if you're mad, you can't get on this platform and pretend you're going to go into the throne room of God and cause worship to come forth. You have to get right. See, that's what we're talking about, getting right, because it's important. It's important for every service for us to be right instead of pretending. Y'all look good, you know. Happy, happy. And inside, you'd like to rip somebody's head off. Not, that's not conducive to a good service, trust me. And, and you, then, you, then you look really strange when, when pastor comes up here and says, okay, we're going to have to pray because <laughs> there's a spirit that's holding everything down. And, and, and everyone who's, who's okay says, geez, I yeah, I guess, okay, we'll agree because we're trying to get you fixed so, we can, so the spirit of God can flow. Oh. <gasps> That's because we love you that much. It's because love's flowing. It's not because we're mad at you. We know how it is. I've just spent the last 30 minutes in the office trying to get past my own stuff. Well, you might as well know that. But that's one of the reasons that we have people praying before service. That's why we've asked them to, we've asked them to come together and pray so that so that things will go smoother. That's why we've asked you to, to be respectful of that. I understand that not everyone is called to intercede. I believe everyone is called to intercede, but not everyone is an intercessor by gift. And these people are gift. And they are important. And the prayer is important. So if you're, if you're here in the, in, the, in the hall, in the, in the sanctuary, then you need to be respectful of them and they need to be respectful of you and we need to be able to flow together because we love each other. Not, not because one's better than the other, because we love each other. Let the love of God do, do, the, do the motivation and it works. It'll work if you do it. No, yeah, one never knows. Praying that I don't do something bad. Hallelujah. Not trying to do something bad. Trying to just trying to get this where it needs to be. Okay. Where it needs to be. Galatians. I was in what I was doing. Okay. Verse two says, Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Did everybody black marker that out of your word or something? So, and, and right in there in white, it's all about me. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Oh, I didn't even know that was in there. 
Well, there you are. You can read the rest of this. I want to do verse 7 real quick. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. You may think you're getting by and you're doing it, you're doing it undercover. But people feel it. We see it. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Especially. Did you see that? Especially unto them. Isn't that amazing? Don't, don't you love that? So that means that you need to start praying and ask God what need you can meet. What person you could help. You could see where you might spread some hospitality. Woohoo! You don't have to have money for, for hospitality. I mean, you don't, you, don't have to, you don't have to, but you can, you can call somebody on the phone and say, hey, can we get together? I'd uh, just, just like to fellowship. Maybe I, you know, everybody in this body needs to get together with somebody they're not used to being around and, and ask them about them and see if they can find out. You will learn something and you will understand more about them and how they behave. And you may not be quite so put off and quite so whatever any longer. Hallelujah. Okay, enough stuff for today. Lovest thou me? Yeah. Well, we may not be having service.